Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to the second part of the epic Strappy 5 crash course. In the previous video, we got started with Strappy 5 and we set up our local instance. If you haven't seen the first video, definitely check it out, but I'll make sure to point the link on the screen here so you could see it. But the plan for us for this tutorial is to build a backend for this website. We have a landing page section that we briefly talked about in the previous video. We also have our dynamic pages. We have our blog posts with our single blog post views. So in the previous videos, what we did is we started with our basic Strapi instance. But before we do that, just as a reminder, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to take the data from our website that you see here, including everything on our landing page and represent the data in Strapi just like you could see here. We're going to create different collection types, single types. We're even going to learn about our different components that we could create here to represent our data. But this is the completed project. But for today, we're going to start with our freshly created project that we did in the last section and go through all the menu items that you see on the left. So after starting my project with Yarn Develop, we're going to be greeted with this dashboard area. And for us, we're going to just take a look at the left navigation here. Our home navigation item is basically your dashboard here. Our next one is our content manager. This is where you're going to see all your content. By default, we just have the user collection type at the moment. As we continue building our application, we're going to add our single types and collection types here as we go along. If you're wondering, what is a single type? Single type is just a single type of content that may represent something on your website. For instance, take a look at our website for our single type. We're going to actually create a single type called global that's going to represent our top announcement bar, our top navigation, as well as the footer data that we see here on the bottom. Our collection type is a type that we might have many of, like a products, pages, or so on. And in our application, we're going to create a collection type for pages, blog posts, tags, and so on. So collection type is for something that you're going to have many of, and single type is for one type of content. Next, we have our media library. This is where you're going to be able to find all your images. What's awesome, you could organize everything via folders. For instance, we could create a new folder, and we're going to call it icons. This is where we're going to put all of our icons. Let's create, and notice how we have this folder. And then we'll create another folder. We're going to call it assets, and this is where all of our images will go. So this is where you manage your media library, files like photos, documents, or videos. Content type builder, this is where all of the magic is going to happen. We're going to skip the store because I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the content type builder, in these video series. But for us, for now, you just have to understand this is where we're going to define our different collections. Like I mentioned, a single type is a type of a collection that it's going to be one of. A collection type is anything that's going to have many items off. Like for instance, you could have many users, you could have many products, you could have many articles and so on. And we will finish this video by creating our first collection type as an example, but for now, we're just going to continue because we'll cover the creation process and all the different types of content that Strapi has in greater detail. As you could see here, there's a lot, so we'll create a designated video just to cover that. Next, we have our deploy option. What's awesome about Strapi, you can Deploy Strapi anywhere where Node.js environment is supported. You could use services like DigitalOcean, AWS, but for those who want to make it easier, we do have and offer a Strapi Cloud version. For this tutorial, we're not gonna worry about that at the moment because first, let's build our application before taking a look at how to deploy it. But in the later videos, we take a look how to deploy it either self-hosting using something like DigitalOcean, and we'll also take a look how easily you could deploy your application to Strapi Cloud. Here at the marketplace, Strapi comes with a huge plugin ecosystem. So here you could find all these different cool plugins that other community members or the Strapi team has created that could add additional functionality to your Strapi app. What's awesome, your Strapi application allows you to 
add any additional functionality via plugin. This is something we're going to cover in future tutorials because building a custom plugin or a custom field is more of intermediate uh, strappy concepts and something we're going to cover after we build our initial project. And finally, we have our settings page. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at a few options here. And, but from the start, we're only gonna focus on the most important areas. If we scroll to the bottom here, we have our admin panel users permission. This is for the users for your Strapi application. For instance, here I have my admin user that is responsible for being able to log in into the Strapi admin. We could create different roles and create role-based access control that will allow different editors or authors or super admins have different functionality or abilities of what they could do in the admin area. This is again, something that we're going to focus in future tutorials, but for now, we're just going to briefly mention it here. And if your website has users, meaning that they're not gonna log in through the Strapi admin, but literally will log in through your Strapi website, this is where users and permissions plugin comes in. And here we have two type of roles, authenticated or public, and what this allows you, you to do. For instance, you could have public access to your endpoints. For now, if I click public, we don't really have too many options here. We have our content type builder, email, upload, and user's permission. For instance, if we take a look at user's permission, and here you could see some of the permissions that are available for us. And what these do is they open a endpoint for us for our front application to consume. So again, we'll talk more about users and permissions, but this is basically will allow you to access certain collection types that we create via our API. I just want to quickly show you here the difference between users permission plugin users and the users that you see here in settings under administration panel. Administration panel are the users that get access to this trappy panel view and your user's permission plugin is if you wanted to have users on your front end website, not your strappy instance where you're able to create users, they'll be able to log in into your front end that you create and have access to certain things. And here's an example here where my coding after 30, which is obviously powered by strappy, my users of this website are able to log in to the front end of my application nor is how I was able to do here. And they're able to see the courses that they have permission to be able to watch. And by the way, as I record these courses here, I'm going to continue to add them to the list. If you missed the first video on getting started with Strapi 5, you could either check it out at codingafter30.com or obviously on this YouTube channel. And what's cool about this, this way you're able to keep your users separate. You could have your website or your product users, which is separate from your administration users, because my product users or users of my SaaS or the business, whatever it is I'm building, maybe I don't need to give them access to my admin area in Strapi because they're not responsible for adding data. So it's kind of cool that Strapi allows to keep those separate. You have your consumers of your product users, and then you have your administration users that use Strapi admin. But we'll take a look at that in greater detail as we continue through the course. But first, I want to give you a very basic overview. So now that we have the basic UI overview, let's jump back into our content type builder. And here, we are actually going to go ahead and create a simple single type collection that we're going to build on in the next video. But for now, I just want to show you how easily you could create a collection and access it via API and be able to get the data really quick. So taking a look at our application, we want to create a page that's going to manage our callout and our top navigation and our footer. So let's create the page to accomplish that. So in Strapi, we're going to click on create new single type. And this one, we're going to call it global. We're going to cover these data structures in greater detail. But for now, here's the ones that we have. We have our top level fields, which means that they're non-relational data, meaning the data is stored in the database where it's created rather than being a relation to another table, which includes the text field, the Boolean field, rich text blocks, the JSON field, number, email, date, password, enum, UIID, media image, for instance, the files, relations to other collection types, 
components and dynamic zones, they're going to be relations and we're going to talk about them in later videos. We also have rich text in Markdown. So for this first page, we're going to use the text field. First one, it, name is going to be the title, which is going to be for the title of our page. Let's add another field. We are again select text and that's going to be description and that's going to be long text. And for now, we'll click finish because we want to get started really quickly just to get a general idea of how you can quickly create a single collection type and access it via your API. Now that we have our data, we're going to go ahead and click save. So now let's navigate to our content manager. And here you could see we have our global page. We could create a title. I'm going to say global page and then description. I'm going to say it will be responsible for our header and footer data. And I'm going to go ahead and click publish. What's awesome, this allows you to have different states. For instance, if I make some change, you could save it and notice how we're going to have the draft state and the published state. And the published state is what is going to show be shown to your live audience. So I'm going to go to draft. I'm going to just delete this and save it. Now that we have our global data, let's navigate back to settings tab, scroll all the way to the bottom here in users permissions, plug in, click roles, and we want our global data to be accessed publicly. So we're going to go roles under public. We're going to select a global page and we're going to say that we want to find our endpoint, meaning that we want to allow us to be able to hit our API endpoint, which is found at API global. When we make a get request, that should get our data. So I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm running my project at localhost 1338. By default, it's 1337, but I updated it because I have another port that's being used. Normally your Strapi application runs on localhost 1337, but I have something else running on that port. So I went ahead and changed it to use port 1338. So I went ahead and opened my project in VS Code. And one thing I want to show you, we just created a single type. You could actually see where your content has been created inside your Strapi application. So if you navigate to the server, to the source folder, if you go to API, you're going to see that it automatically created this global folder, which has all the necessary controllers, routes, and services that make our endpoint functional. If you take a look in the content types, global schema, you will see our schema for that content type. Currently, we just have two fields, which is title and description. You can't programmatically create your schema manually in code, but that's only when you're doing something, when you're building plugins. For a majority of the time, you could create all your content from the admin panel like we just did. And to test our endpoint, we're going to use an extension in VS Code called Postman. And we're going to make a new request. For you, it's going to be 1337. But because I changed this on mine, it's going to be port 1338. And it's going to be API slash global. And if you're wondering where is this coming from, this is from users and permission roles, taking a look at the global endpoint where we enabled find and notice that this is the endpoint that we're hitting. If you didn't save, make sure you save to activate the endpoint. And now when we send the request, notice that we're able to get our data. We get our title, which is our global page, and we get our description, which is this will be responsible for our header and footer data. So notice how quickly we were able to create our first single type, and we were able to expose that endpoint. And with Postman, we were able to make a get request to that endpoint and get our data. So now we know that our API works and we could start in the next video building out our global page to include the data from our website. We're going to start with the basics by building out our top navigation first, where we're going to learn the concept of components and the way to think about structuring data in your website. As always, if you have any questions, you could always ask them in the comments to this video. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video where we're going to start breaking down this navigation menu into its designated components. And I'll show you how to represent that data inside our Strapi app, inside the content type builder,
by adding additional fields, components that are going to represent our website data. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.